What is going on guys? Welcome to your 21st video in Project Lisa and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create this drop down list right here. Now we're saying this is going to be a pretty dumb video because I already know how to create a drop down list. It's like the first thing I ever learned. Well actually this is no ordinary drop down list although it may look like one at first glance. What this is is a smart drop down list. Now what this is is basically whenever a user searches for items like YouTube they can go ahead and search all categories or they can go ahead and search a specific category such as I don't know um computer or let's go ahead and make sense say they're searching for a YouTube t-shirt so they would go ahead and search clothing and accessories now when they go ahead and hit search it takes you to your search page and you get all the results However, if you notice, the category gets passed through the URL and the default form option is now clothing and accessories. So not only does it search the clothing and accessories section of the database, but it also retains that value. And this just makes it a whole lot easier to navigate your searches. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to pretty much include this feature on the website right now. So before we even get started with that, the first thing that we need to do is some housekeeping stuff. Remember when we made the header and search code and we said right here is where whenever we build our links, this is where the function needs to go? Well guess what? In the last couple of tutorials we built our links. So let's go ahead and copy this function and that's where it goes. So basically, hold on, got an itch in my ear. Ah, there we go. So basically our links are going to get outputted right in between this right align div so they go right here exactly where we need them to be and now what we want to do is this space right here was reserved for the list of categories this is where we make pretty much our category drop down menu that I just showed you guys at the beginning of this video now that's the function we're going to be creating in this tutorial however we didn't name the function yet obviously because we didn't create it yet so let's go ahead and name this create category list and that's what we're going to be making so basically the header and search code this function is 100 percent complete this function is 100 percent complete the only other thing we need to do is code create category list and we'll be good to go now what I did in between the last tutorial and this tutorial is I actually made one more function. Now I didn't want to make a video of me coding this because it's basically the same exact thing over and over and over again and it takes like 10 minutes to code and uh, it would just be incredibly boring. So what this function is, it's a super easy function, it's called number to category. You pass it in a number from zero to whatever and it basically test what that number is and it returns a string or a category so basically if we pass the function in the number 21 it would return the string tools and home improvement now I'll show you why I needed to make this function later on basically it makes it a whole lot easier whenever you're working with categories but now let's go ahead and learn how to create that smart drop down menu right here that retains the value so let me go ahead and code this baby right under top right links and right over number to category. So the first thing we need to do, or the first thing I always like to do, is add a little comment. And I'm going to go ahead and write create category options hello for search bar. There we go. Now, of course, what did I name this? create category list so function create category I'm actually just going to copy that because you definitely don't want to have a typo whenever working with functions or else it's going to call the wrong function so of course it doesn't take any parameters and the job of this function is basically to create the HTML that's necessary for making up this drop down list now the first very first thing we're going to do is we want to look at the URL and see if the user is searching in a specific category right now. Now the reason we want to do that isn't because we want to query the database that only searches for clothing and accessories, but we need that we need to see if they're searching in a specific category because if they are then we want to make that option the default option, the first option that you see 
I gotta stop saying that. The first option that you see whenever you create that form. So basically, if clothing and accessories they were searching in, then that's the value that they wanna see in their form. So in order to do that, you just need a simple if statement. So if, and another thing, this is um, kind of security. I like to data check all my stuff. First of all, because if you notice, when you say category equals seven right now, that seven is a digit. We don't want them to, uh, you know, pass in any JavaScript or PHP or malicious uh, SQL into our database. So what I like to do is I need to confirm that this is indeed a numerical value because, of course, whenever I talk about security later on, I'll show you guys how you can actually uh, hack websites doing that. But for now, check it out. C type underscore digit is a built-in function that basically you pass it in a variable and it returns true if that value is a number and if it's like a string or if it's just some random characters it's gonna return false so what we wanna do is we wanna get that value from the URL now the value from the URL is called get category now again this is only going to return true if that number in the URL is a digit or a numerical value. So if that number is indeed a numerical value, then what we want to do is go ahead and take a variable x, I just named that up, I mean I uh, made that up, and we want to set it equal to this thing right here. Copy. And the reason I'm putting um, my entire if else statement on one line is because this is an incredibly simple one. And whenever I make really simple if else statements, I like to put them on one line. I don't know, it's just easier for me to see. Else, let's go ahead and set x equal to 999. Actually, we don't even need to. x equals 999. So basically, if the category they're searching for is a numerical number, because of course what other number would it be then we're gonna set it equal to whatever number it is so in this case let me just go ahead and make a search real quick search for computer now computer category is 9 so in this case X would be equal to 9 however if they're just searching for all categories or something X would be equal to 999 which is just a random number I set X equal to because no category is equal to 999 